I do have a, you know, I do put a stop loss and I've made certain attempts to grab hold of the long side of this pound yen. And every time, you know, it's been stopped out and then you see now we're on the high of the day or the high of the week. And, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, for certain trades, I just, uh, I don't put in a stop loss. And in fact, what I do is, um, you know, if I feel like I, I've got a little bit of exposure, you know, overnight when I'm sleeping, I'll actually throw in a hedge, which I kind of did last night. So again, you know, this is um, going to miff some people. I understand it because you took some hits and uh, I'm actually sitting on the high of the week here and my trades are doing well. And um, again, I, I don't know how to blend my responsibility where I put out an email. I try to you know, put the, the stops as wide as I could. And uh, I think the stop last night in, 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 in pound yen was 135.11, went to 135.05. So got ticked out by five ticks and now it's uh, 120 pips higher. So I don't know how to, um, you know, explain my way out of this thing. Um, So ATN says, I, should I re-enter the pound yen? And, you know, I would. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things, one of the, you know, I'm going to kind of go through a lot of my thinking here. One of the things I think I've shared with you uh, is my weakness, is that when I see something, and I think I told you last week, you know, one of my friends said, man, you see things so quickly, so early. But the problem is sometimes when you you see things early, uh, there's always a lot of volatility before that early direction takes hold. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, and the metaphor was like, you know, just because you're in a car 12, you know, 12 cars back of the street light, when the street light changes, it doesn't mean you can go. And yeah, I think I, I made some early mistakes this week because, you know, and the good news is, you know, even if you lost in some trades in pound yen, I think the way we're going to close, uh, this is going to, you know, give you the the momentum to push, you know, uh, a lot higher. So even though if you take a hundred pips here or there loss, uh, you know, I can make a five, six hundred pips on a trade very quickly. Uh, so there's some, you know, good news and bad. But I just wanted to kind of share with you my mindset you know, what I was looking at, and I have been, you know, struggling with these yen pairs for a while. Like exactly what are they doing? What are they representing? Uh, you know, and for me, getting it right will mean making a lot of money. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, I'll go through it bit by bit and show you kind of, I take kind of, you know, a, a global approach I kind of see things and then I kind of put on a trade with a certain view and, uh, you know, unless certain things happen, um, you know, I don't just, I don't just get, get out. So again, I'm going to struggle, I think, to explain my entire thought process. There is so much ambiguity and so many things that go through my head when I look at this pound yen, you know, and we've talked about for a long time that this has been in a bear market, starting with this classic you know, uh, double top and head and shoulders. And first off, you know, this is the beauty of seeing patterns. So if you see this double top and then you see this head and shoulders, you know, and you isolate it here or up here, you know, you can, you know, make a life changing uh, trade, you know, where you can make $70,000 for every thousand dollars you bet. And look, this happened once five years ago. So it doesn't happen all the time. But what I try and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, try and achieve my objective on these things is to educate you guys to, you know, notice patterns uh, that, you know, could translate to big moves. So even if you saw this double top here, there was a huge move to be had here. And now, quite frankly, you know, I'm trying to understand where we are, you know, in this trade. Uh, you know, we've, you know, because these, these patterns, you know, are, when I see these patterns, I call them governing patterns because they govern or dictate price behavior going forward. Now, you know, this pattern has been governing, you know, the trajectory of this market for five years. And eventually things do change, uh, you know, and I'm trying to determine if things are changing or basically, you know, just staying within the cadence of what we see. So even though we've seen this rounding top, we've seen these huge kind of you know, rallies, 
And each one of these rallies tends to peter out. And I don't know if we're into another one, which will then peter out, or you know, we are now something that is building something more sustainable that may even reverse this whole thing. So I've had you know a lot of ambiguity here, uh, but for my mind, in the in the short term, you know, and I've been saying, you know, to my mind, pound yen feels like at least the momentum feels like it's still higher, that every time it should have broken, it didn't break, and that it feels like we still have one more thrust that could, you know, take us to 140 before it even craps out again. But, you know, in this little area, I feel, and there's been, you know, some some technical signals and price action that indicates that, you know, we had this mini reversal last week where we made a low right on this support line and closed on the high. Now this bar was still red, but you can see, to my mind, it closed closer to the high than the than the low. And so, you know, I kind of look at these as this, you know, is, you know, establishes my risk. So that reversal says the guys that try to push it down last week didn't succeed. So now I'm going to try and benefit, you know, from their failure, because now, you know, I understand, you know, that it's you know not going to be real fertile to try and push this thing down here. And so, you know, I've, I've kind of adopted this view that, you know, we're on balance looking like we've got another push here. Uh, and, uh, you know, there still could be another three, four, five hundred, you know, points. And, you know, we could still crap out at that point because that's really what this thing has been doing. Every rally has been subsequently met by a huge, you know, sell off. Uh, and I'm still trying to determine, you know, if we are, you know, I've got certain shapes here. You know, you see a certain double bottom here and then this uh, thrust here. So this really kind of is like, a, you know, a bit of an even atom double bottom where you have a number of pokes at one support area and one poke off the other support area. And now we're, you know, kind of, you know, incrementally in fits and starts, you know, we've got higher lows. You know, so I'm kind of forming the hypothesis that this thing is we're going to work its way higher. And that by kind of grabbing a foothold somewhere in here, that if it goes to 140, I'm going to make a, you know, a nice four or 500 picks. And that's kind of what, you know, I've been doing, but, you know, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll dial it back. We'll look at the daily and even look at, you know, you know, some of the hourly trades. And you can see that this is not, this is a bucking Bronco. You know, I made a video yesterday and I said, pound New Zealand and pound yen, you know, is 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 not for ch for children. It's not for kids to play. It's like fireworks. It should should come with a warning label, like you know, uh, you know, don't do this at home. Uh, so you know, this thing goes up and down two, three hundred pips. You know, every couple of you know hours. And so this is why I always say you kind of have to have a global vision. You know, kind of you know feel like you understand things. Now, obviously, if it got below here, uh, you know, that would you know start. Uh, setting some 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 lurk bells, but what happened was we were trading up here last night, and then it looked like we were starting to go lower, and I you know and I said to myself, and this is where I kind of draw pictures, you know, so I I'm very visual and I I look at these bars and I see how they stack up, and I was saying to myself before I'm looking at this thing at 11:30 at night, I could see this thing was going to come off. I was already long, and I said, look, I know I'm going to take some heat. I said, but, you know, can I see this thing really driving through last week's reversal and going through here? And, you know, look, it was a gamble. And what I ended up doing was I um, I actually ended up, you know, uh, establishing a hedge so that for every two positions uh, I had long, I sold one short. So I like I hedged half the position. Now, um, you can do this everywhere except in the United States. And in order to hedge a position, in the United States, you'd actually have to open up a two, you know, two accounts. And I'll share with you what I did. So instead of putting a stop loss, instead of getting stopped down on something that I kind of knew just, you know, even if they try to drive it higher, uh, lower, that, you know, they, 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 they just, you know, they, it, I, I couldn't see prices going through, you know, just a collapse. Now, one day I'm going to be wrong and it's, I'm going to wake up one night, one, one day, and it's, it, it is going to do that. And that's why I have such trouble saying, you know, you got you, you got to put a stop loss on each trade, uh, but it's not a panacea. Um, and so there's two things. First off, I think I was too early, but, you know, I kind of felt like in my water that this thing's going to take off and I didn't want to miss it. 
Uh, but as it turns out, you know, it just needed to go through a few days of just really thrusting around uh, before, you know, it's doing what it's doing. Um, so this is the, the daily chart. And, you know, I started looking at this coil. You know, I got in early uh, last week at about 134.67. When I saw that, we kind of hit this uh, support area. And then we had this coil. And then I had a buy stop. And then I've been trying to put a, you know, buy stop every time this thing goes. So, you know, uh, the other week, you know, a couple days ago, it, you know, made a new reversal here. And I suggested putting a buy stop at 134, 136.57. And you can see that thing just went down and got stopped out. But now the market is right back. And so, you know, I'll show you what I did on the short term chart last night and, you know, how if I see something, um, I don't, you know, because it's just hard to put a stop loss. I mean, from here to here is a couple hundred pips. And yet you can see it really didn't mean anything. So, you know, what I'm trying to stand, you know, stand back and say, really, out of all of this noise, you know, what shapes are kind of standing out to me? Because it's kind of a, a conflict where up here you had the double top that obviously gave, you know, a great trade. Once you saw that, you know, technical position in the direction of the trade, you made $20,000 for every $1,000 you made. And so now you have to determine, is that the governing pattern? Or, you know, is there another set of governing patterns that are showing up that perhaps that will override that? And you can see in this time frame all the way back here, we have this classic double bottom. And now while it doesn't really look at, we have this asymmetric double bottom where you kind of have a low, you have a thing, you have a retest. And though it doesn't look like it, you know, when we look back, this could look like a W bottom. And you can see that we've been thrashing around above and below kind of the neckline of this most recent pattern. And, you know, beyond that, you know, also recently we had this double bottom here and markets just came right back to that support area. And so I was concluding that this coil, you could see that the market just couldn't get pushed lower. In a market that should go lower, whenever I kind of look at something and I think, okay, the pound yen is in a, is in a the downtrend, it should go down. Uh, we've got all the patterns. This look like a head and shoulders. And when the market starts going in, in, in a direction that, you know, it shouldn't based on, you know, that form of analysis, it, you know, it kind of invalidates it for me. And so incrementally more and more, and even now, and I think that this is the good news that even though, you know, you may have taken some hits on these first few trades, that a lot of the risk has now been taken out so that if you get in, uh, a lot of the risk will be underpinned and you can make four or 500 pips, you know, seamlessly. And so what I'm looking at in this area is that you've got these two days right here. It may be hard to see here, but certainly today. Now we haven't closed today. We've got, you know, four or five hours to go before the end of the trading day. And right now we are closing uh, or at the high part of the day. So now you've got this area of support where you came out of this coil and now you've been thrashing around here, consolidating, and now you've got these key reversals and, you know, now it's time to go. So now to my mind, you know, would be, you know, an effort, effortless thing. And again, nothing with this thing is effortless, you know, where, you know, you put a buy stop somewhere above here. And I think that this thing could still keep going higher. So, you know, if the question is, should I buy it? I'm very long. I've been very aggressive in going long and kind of keeping my positions, despite the fact that we've been thrashing around in here. And look, I should have you know, understood this because I always say that the market needs to build some space. So you know, when the market kind of goes down really parabolically, it usually doesn't shoot up in the same direction. It needs to build out you know, some space so that it can find a way to build a, you know, an opposite momentum. And I think this is exactly what's happening. And in fact, if we look at, you know, in the even near term, you know, I could make the case that we've got this nifty little inverted head and shoulders building. You know, we're trading right at this neckline, which is this 136.50 area. And that anything through this neckline, I think, will be the final confirmation. And then we'll get this. And then, you know, you might get six, 800, 1,000 pips. So, yeah, 
you know, you might have taken some hits, but, you know, this is a trading. You got to dust yourself off and, uh, you know, and uh, get back on the horse again. So, um, so this is kind of what I did. You know, instead of putting a stop loss, and I knew, you know, and, and again, I advocate don't take, you know, you know, shorter term, you know, trades or look at short term things. But I was kind of, you know, looking at this chart last night and I knew before I go to bed that I was, I was going to take a hit. I just knew that, you know, things were going to come off and uh, it was going to get ugly. But I had to trust in the long term. So, you know, when I was going to bed last night, you know, looking at the thing, thing at midnight, wanted to go to bed and saying, you know, this thing's driving me crazy. So I saw the double top. And then I saw, you know, this this pattern, this descending wedge happening here. And I said, the double top, the descending wedge, I said, I, I know this thing is just going to get hit. And I just have to, you know, trust that I'm going to wake up in the morning and uh, Humpty Dumpty D will put, it, put himself back together again. But what I did was I put in a hedge right here. I said, if prices fall through this low of this descending wedge, I think I put a, a sell stop at 135.77. And then I put a, you know, a buy at 135.42. Uh, uh, so I actually made a little bit of money and protected myself on half my position. So while, you know, most of my position was falling, I was making some money on this. I got out. And then, of course, now it's all back up. And so I've made a ton of money by kind of not getting out. And you can see this is the folly of also trading on short term things, because what we're looking at here is a perfect looking head and shoulders. So if I saw this on the daily or the weekly and, you know, saw the neckline, I'd say, you know, this is just a no brainer. you got to short this thing. And yes, this thing did come off, but you can see how quickly it comes back because, you you know, by looking at this hourly thing, it doesn't tell you anything about the long term cadence, what we just looked at on the daily and the weekly. And so, yes, you can see these trades and make bets off these things, but you can see how they give these false looks where you have a perfect double top, perfect head and shoulders. And on a daily or weekly, I would expect this. You know, instead, you wake up and now it's, you know, in your face if you shorted that. So, you know, I'm trying to give you a balance, you know, get inside my head where, you know, I, I look at things on the long term. I, I looked at the weekly last night and I, I just kind of, drew a picture of my mind and I said, can I see this bar? Even, you know, if I, I'm, I'm sleeping, can I see this thing kind of, you know, keep pushing? And and and, and one night, you know, wake up and, 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 and I'll find out that will happen. Uh, and that's the danger. And that's why I don't like to advertise that I don't put stops and whatever, but there are ways to protect yourself. So in here, I kind of knew I was in trouble. I knew this thing was going to take a hit. And so I just threw on a hedge. So, you know, for every two that I was long, I just went short one. So now I was protecting like half my position. So even if this thing kept on going down, at least half my you know position was projected. But I knew that this was even, you know, going to be short lived. So I kind of put a put a take profit here, got in here, made a piece like this on my shorts and now I'm benefiting on my longs. And I think that this thing's going to smoke. I said in my last emails, I, I think that. You know, we could, you know, look at this session. If you go up two, 300 pips today, you can see it's, you know, sitting on or going to new highs as we're speaking. So I realized this, you know, could miff some people and, and, and whatever, but uh, this is not easy stuff. The market's dynamic and fluid. And you can see this is the folly of trading on short term time frames where, you know, this is what trading the pound yen looks like. You know, it's up, you know, 200 pips and, you you know, you've got the I remember I was. Um, uh, you know, trading this thing, you know, I'm making, you know, all kinds of money here. And then a report on the New Zealand dollar comes out. And in 10 seconds, you know, my portfolio went down, you know, like five percent in like 10 seconds. Actually, I think that was on the pound New Zealand. That wasn't this trade. But I'm just making the point that, you know, these things, you know, just go up and down. And if you're trading this on the 15 minute, you know, you're just going to get worn out by the time the real trade goes. You're done. You're cooked. You, 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 you know, you probably lost a bunch and your, your, your mind is fried. So I try and look at the big picture. And when you're looking at the 15 minute chart, really the big picture here looks like this is really the dominant pattern. This looks like, you know, head and shoulders, double top, you know, once it takes out, 
this should be a green light. And that's why, you know, I don't advocate, you know, on a 15 minute chart, anything can happen in the next 15 minutes. And you can see that, you know, if you didn't get out in the middle of the night, you know, it's, it's, it's in your face. And so, you know, this pattern means nothing. And so that's why I, 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 I put these patterns in context, you know, on a 15 minute chart, it's just a gamble where this thing is going to go in any, you know, any time frame. But, you know, I'm kind of looking at this thing longer term, piecing it together, looking at the support, putting one bar on top of the other and trying to piece together, a, you know, a plan. E e you know, obviously easier said than done. But I've been long advocating the long side of pound, you know, yen. Uh, I've been adding to my trades. I've been taking huge wax every time it comes off. But eventually, I think I'm going to be smiling. And so this is kind of, it's, you know, obviously a lot easier said than done, especially with pound New Zealand and pound yen, where these things fly all over the place. And so putting a stop is hard where, you know, it goes from 137 to 135 in a heartbeat. You know, so putting a 37 pip stop or a 57 pip or even a 175 pip stop wasn't good enough. And so, you know, when I'm, you know, looking to catch something or I think I, I, I see some something that, you know, has, you know, a vision for a broader move, you know, I try and deal with it in, you know, in different ways. And obviously, you know, uh, you know, the, the way to do it is just put on smaller risks, you know, uh, you know, smaller lot sizes to allow for it. And frankly, when things like, you know, Pound New Zealand start coming off today, I, I started adding. You know, so, you know, when 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 I had this slide off here, I saw the double top on this thing. Yeah, it looks like a classic double top, but this is a 15 minute chart and I'm, you know, inherently long. So I actually started buying right in here at 194.70 and adding to my position. And I'm just, you know, long a boatload of, of, of pound New Zealand because I'm kind of looking at this thing as the the long ball. You know, and uh, May says, is it possible? Can you email us once you found the change? So it's not because I'd be sending out an email every four minutes. You can see on these 15 minute charts how these things come off, they go up, they come off. And what I'm trying to do uh, for you guys is to build kind of a mindset on how to look at the markets because they will give you all kinds of deflection, you know, to get you out. You know, I knew I was in, I was long here and I knew the way this was shaping up that this thing was just going to take a hit, that I was going to be in trouble in the short term. But I, I just had to kind of feel like I understood the long term uh, that would protect me. Now, the danger with this conversation is that one day you're going to think you have that and, you know, uh, it, you know, the market's going to get, you know, go go way against you. And so this is why I have very a lot of difficulty you know, sharing some of this stuff. But, you know, again, I just go back to, you know, the basics. You have to start with a vision, uh, a global vision of what is going on. You know, a market throws a whole bunch of crap at you. You know, for years, this has just been kind of like, how, how, how do you make sense of this? And the way I try and make sense of it is, you know, kind of looking at, you know, is there a dominant pattern that is uh, governing the trajectory so that even though it doesn't look like it, to my mind, this is a stealth bull market. You know, I've been saying this for four years and it all starts off with, and we talked about this every time we talk, here's the double bottom and the rounding, you know, bottom and, you know, connected by this neckline. So to me, this is the trading for dummies pattern. Now, it's not to say you just go blindly and say, okay, now I'm going to buy this new high. Now you get wiped out on a thousand pip, you know, move the other way. You know, and I do take these counter trend moves, but, you know, I understand them for being counter to the main trend and even this, because I think this is going the dominant, you know, direction. So every time this thing comes off, I'm kind of, you know, wetting my chops because to me, this is an opportunity. And I said to you guys two weeks ago, in my emails and whatever, I said, I feel like this 190 level is going to hold. I said, I feel like, in, you know, this is the weekly. I sent out in my in my elite emails, I said, look, there's a lot of thrashing around here. There's a lot of volatility here. But to me, this is just a, the buying opportunity of a lifetime. 
And it is, it feels like it's one of these where you get one of this double bottom here and now you get 4,000 pips the other way. And I feel like this could be one of those times where you know now we're looking at this double bottom where it's held this 190. Yes, you got a lot of thrashing around, but at the end of the day, it's you know it's it it's it looks intact, and uh, you know to my mind, that looks like the direction. Notwithstanding the fact that it flew up and down every 15 minutes, three four hundred pips. And again, I say to myself last night, you know, do I see this thing? You know, I was long. And, you know, I said, you know, can I see this bar kind of going like this? And, you know, yeah, in a way, I kind of could. You know, if this thing was really bearish and, you know, I looked at it. So, you know, it's, it's not a straightforward deal. And then if I kind of get into a thing where now I got to go to sleep, I can't watch this thing all night, whatever. I just hedge my position. And so even if you hedge it one for one, at least you can wake up in the morning and kind of figure out, OK, this is shaking out. The direction is starting to flesh itself out. I'm going to dump my shorts and, you know, get on with business. And so that to me is, you know, one way I really handle things is where I hedge my trades. And just so you understand, you know, let's have long, you know, 10 mini lots. You know, I'll either, you know, put on a shorts and, you know, I still don't believe that the shorts going to be the directional thing. So I won't cover, you know, you could cover your whole thing. So you could just wake up in the morning and now just start managing your trade. Once you start seeing that, hey, that this is fleshing itself out, you dump the shorts and, you know, let the, you know, let the longs go. And sometimes, you know, what happened last night is that I, I made money on my shorts also. So, you know, I made like 50 pips on half my position, dumped out of them, made money on that. And now my longs are going up. So it's kind of like a twofer. Um, and, you know, so what I did was I actually just uh, shorted half my position because I still felt that the, the bias will be the upside. So and I was really talking about the pound yen here where I was long, let's say 10 units. I short five. I took, I think, 50 pips profit on the five. And now the longs are starting to sort themselves out. So, look. You know, on day-to-day -day trades, I put stop losses and I observe those things. But for me, these these two trades, pound New Zealand and pound yen, you know, are at an inflection point. And I think uh, if I get it right, I'm going to make a ton of dough. And so this is really where my focus is. Yeah, I'll fart around. I'll take some gold trades here and there. I made some money on gold shorting. I'll do some things. But, you know, when I'm really focused like a laser beam, when I see something, that tells me, hey, I've got the pattern in my direction uh, and I've got the price action. So you can see this double bottom right here. The price action also was that it made a new low, close at the high, made a new low, close at the high. So when I see the pattern, the direction, the cadence and everything, you know, so you can see that we've just been sitting along this long term trend line. And, you know, every time, you know, it kind of you know, let me pick another color. You know, this has just been hugging this trend line. And this was just another opportunity. And this could be one of those buying opportunities of, you know, of a lifetime, you know, where the risk now is pretty established along this thing. This thing is pretty mature. And the next one is going to be a, a, a boomer. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of looking to, you know, dig in, get positioned, and uh, try and withstand all the uh, the slings and arrows, you know, before this thing gets going. And that's why, you know, this kind of calms it down. If you kind of look at things just on a weekly, and that may be the way to handle a big trade. If you're looking for something like this, you're not going to be able to achieve that objective if you're watching this thing on a 15-minute chart, because then it just looks like this. And every time it's looking like this, your heart attack, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a heart attack. You get out here. And then it's up there again. And so the best thing to do is, you know, slow it down, look at a longer time frame, take a wider risk and take a smaller lot size. So, you know, get in here, take a small lot size and, you know, and put your risk here, which is 500 pips away. That's really the only way to stay in this trade. I mean, I don't think it's going to go down another 500 pips. You may even be able to get away with, you know, putting something under this week's low, because if it's good, you know, if something's good, it should keep going. You know, that's my, it shouldn't just, you know, stick around and, you know, 
if something's really good, it, 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 it giddy ups and goes. So, you know, I've spent a lot of time. I, I'd like, uh, you know, just to get some input uh, from you guys, if you, um, how are you responding to this uh, information? Um, so Chris says what you make says makes sense, but be aware the market ma makers who can see our stop losses take the traders out before. Yeah, look, you know, I've got the stopped out, you know, really on, on, on the biggest prints of the day and say, how does that happen? And yeah, that happens. And so um, from, from my mind, really, Look, I'm tr I try and make my my money on on a few trades a year. I try and think, see, you know, sometimes where something just lines up and represents a big opportunity. You know, day in and day out, we see things here, we see things here, you know, grab things here. But you know, this these yen trades, this pound New Zealand trade, to my mind, we are at a cusp, you know, of of, of something. And so these are the things. So I just kind of tend to focus like a laser beam, start building positions and start, you know, keeping my position no matter what they throw at me. I mean, that's hard. I mean, you know, look, um, it's a lot of stress. And, uh, you know, but I think the way just to take it out is just look at this thing and say, OK, you know, yeah, we had a million. If you look at this weekly bar, it looked like this this week. And yet, if you stand back and look at this weekly bar, you're basically even slightly higher than last week's close. So for all that thrashing around, you know, it's still, you know, guiding higher. And so what I try and do is find a few trades that really speak to me, where I feel like I see the shape, I see the pattern, I see the price action. And I feel like if I get in, you know, even if I'm early, um, you know, I'm just going to take this, the bullets um, before this thing gets going. And, you know, it's not easy. You know, if it was easy, then, you know, everybody would be doing it and whatever. So, you know, this is the daily. And again, you know, the daily is we had this this flushing out, which, you know, in hindsight, and I advised our members to get out of the long trades, um, you know, this week, because I saw it shaping up like, you know, we were starting to get some resistance in here. Um, so, you know, this is just kind of being early where you see, you know, when something comes off again, it, it, when something comes off this hard, it doesn't just go like that. It, 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 it always kind of has to build some space in order to build away from this so that it can go the other way. And even knowing that, I still freaking get in early and put myself through all kinds of volatility instead of waiting for the one bar that just says, okay, now it's time to get in and now it's a no brainer. And so, you know, that's what this feels like now where you've kind of made this low and that's it. And now, you know, you put your buy stop in here and let this thing kind of do its, you know, its thing, you know, and if, you know, if it fails then it's probably not meant to be. So, you know, we have the double bottom here, this thing. So it's kind of an even abdomen double bottom. And again, the governing pattern, if I were just to look at this on this daily chart that goes back a year, I would still say the governing pattern, you know, looks like this huge head and shoulders. So, you know, if I looked at just even and a year is a long time to look at something. If I'm looking at this thing, I'm saying the weight of this trade looks heavy. Looks like this thing should come down and maybe it will. But it, this is why, you know, when I look at the weekly chart, I feel that that double bottom in 2016, 2017 is going to hold. Now, does this mean that this, you know, can go back down to 185 before it goes? It could. So it's not bulletproof. But, you know, I start out with certain things, look at certain price action, you know, kind of see how it also held here where we also had, you know, this double bottom support. But we also kind of had this little, you know, inverted head and shoulders, you know, and we cut through the neckline and all we did was, you know, come back to the neckline. And this is what markets tend to do. They break out of certain areas and then they retest. And then when they successfully retest, then they really go. So, you know, again, 
despite trading for so long, I still can't stop myself. Um, you know, I get in too early, but I know also I have enough confidence in what I'm looking at that, you know, I'm going to stick it out. And you're going to have to throw a lot of, you know, crap at me, a lot of bullets to, you know, to kind of get me out. And so obviously if it starts coming down here, you know, game's over, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, I'm going to capitulate to, to the, you know, to something that's, so I kind of set up in my mindset, what's happening, what I think's happening. And then I look for the market to confirm it. And if the market's not confirming it, then, you know, that, that sends off a green light in my brain also. And then I'll react, to, you know, accordingly. Something I'll, sometimes I'll just do the, the opposite of what I thought was going to happen because it's not happening. And that kind of applies to this dollar yen where, you know, it, it's kind of happening, but it's, it's kind of not. And then, you know, I'm always kind of, you know, aware or prepared that, you know, this could set up a trap where, you know, we see this bearish shape here that's been forming over weeks and weeks. And, you know, look, it still looks like it's going to happen. But, you know, we have two bars here, these two key reversals right here. And these reversals right here where, you know, it's, look, this is still a case of lower highs. So next week, you know, if we, you know, uh, you know, slice through the lows and now we're back here, you know, this is going to, you know, keep confirming, you know, what I'm looking at. On the other hand, you know, you can see you've got this narrow range bar looks kind of innocent here, but behind it is you have this key reversal. And so to my mind, I wouldn't be surprised if the next energy push is here. So the yen pairs are starting to feel like I had a certain expectation that they were going to go lower. And yes, they are drifting lower, but they're kind of stopped going lower with the velocity they were. And now you're kind of digging in and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see something you know, back to 108 or something like that. And so, you know, this is what happens. I, I look at the market with a certain premise and then when it feels like a struggle. So, you know, all the way back here, I said, you know, I'm extremely bearish. I expect a retest of the 104 and it did happen, but not with, you know, so you see the, you know, the double top here, you see the head and shoulders here and kind of once it kind of cut through here, then, you know, the market should just giddy up and go. You know, once the patterns trace itself out and, you know, you think you see what it is, uh, it should do it. Now, it's not to say that, you know, you could come retest this neckline, you know, get this fake out and then do this. And I'm perfectly, you know, you know, I start drawing all of these scenarios in my mind and then I see what the market does around these scenarios. So, you know, for instance, if we, you know, come out the high Next week, it indicates that, hey, this market is stopped going down. On the other hand, you know, if we take out the low, you know, then, it, you know, it brings in the question that, you know, we could be back in. So I kind of draw my structure. I draw I put I draw all these scenarios in my mind um, when I'm looking at a chart. And then when price does something, uh, you know, I'm not, um, you know, surprised. And then I can react accordingly. So what I'm looking at right here, these two guys right here, where you made a new low and you close on the high. So those reversals are kind of guarding, they're standing century to this downside right now. It's not to say that it can't happen and if this thing just keeps fizzling next week, it can happen big. So, you know, right now this is a case of lower highs, you know, and, you know, if this next week we start taking out these lower highs, then, you know, I would kind of look at that as, you know, a brewing paradigm shift. And that's kind of what I'm starting to feel. You know, sometimes you just feel that the market is, you know, just luring you in and setting you up for a trap. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to determine if that's happening in the yen pairs where, you know, on balance, I still see them extremely bearish and yet, yeah, there's something feeling like it's going on that could go the other way. And so, again, it's it's not really uh, definitive uh, in my mind. And and frankly, you know, this still thing, this thing still kind of looks bearish. I mean, this 
looks like the governing pattern, this head and shoulders, this is the double top. And I'm gonna be very ex interested to see where we close. So this is, this is why I look at how something closes you know, relative to its high and low because it points. So when you had that key reversal here, even though you made a new low, this did point that it was digging in. And, you know, this, you know, reversal that we had is starting to fade right now. You know, this was kind of at the higher part of the bar. We're still still in the middle. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see where we close. So if we close up here, you know, it's going to look, uh, you know, fairly interesting. But right now, you know, we're sitting right at an inflection point, right at the neckline of this double bottom. So now it's like, okay, which are the governing price patterns? Is it, you know, this couple of double bottoms here, or is it this head and shoulders and this double bottom? And I mean, this still is a downtrend until proven otherwise. You can see we came right to the resistance. And so this is the fun part. We're going to know pretty quickly what's happening here. If this thing, you know, keeps going down next week, then you know, that gives me an indication that, you know, this is kind of going in the direction of the trend. On the other hand, you know, if this is kind of the, the retest of the neckline and we start getting some traction, I'll start, you know, smelling something else. So when I say we're in an, an inflection point, it means it, it could go in either direction. And now, and, and, and I look at this thing continuously. I mean, I, I still have to give the weight to the bears. This is still a downtrend. This still feels like the dominant patterns. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's it's dicey, dicey in here. I mean, the yen still feels like it's, the dollar yen still feels like it's coming down, you know, in, in bits and pieces, but it's coming down. And so it's uh, it's just tricky in here, folks. It's, uh, it's not an easy game. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't help to play play early. But I just feel like these pound pairs are digging in, you know, and that's the other thing. Pound, uh, you know, had an outbreak of COVID, uh, had all kinds of Brexit problems and got driven down, you know, based on that. But, you know, it's perception versus reality. The market's a discounting force. So if you're looking at the news, you know, you, you can't trade that way. I mean, President Trump just became positive for the coronavirus his whole team, his wife, you know, you can't trade based on that. To me, I look at those events and I look at them in context with what's happening in the market. Not, you know, do you trade the news? Does the news, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of make, uh, you know, inform your trading strategy, but does the, 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 the patterns in place, you know, how are they responding to the impact of different things? So to me, it always comes down to price. You know, I try and drown all of that other stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm throwing a lot at you guys. I'm trying to kind of give you a sense. I mean, this is not an easy gig. And that's why a lot of people lose. And, uh, you know, I've found a way to win. Um... It's just not easy, right? It's not a straightforward thing. There's not, the market is dynamic and fluid and there's not a straightforward way to handle things. And the best way is, you know, look, is to kind of wait. And, you know, when I, you know, look at things now, I kind of kick myself because sometimes it's just, it's so clear, right? And it's just much better to wait for that clarity. Now, it's easy to say in hindsight because I thought that this was the clarity. You know, I thought that, you know, we had a key reversal here, made a new low, closed at the high. And I thought, you know, this was a little, little inverted head and shoulders. But you can see coming down so quick, you don't go up so hard. So experience should have told me, hey, this is just going to take a little bit more time to, you know, mature. It's going to, you know, still try and, you know, flesh out the weak hands. But when you see something like this now, we have these two key reversals. We made a new low and right now we're in the high part of the day where where it ends five hours from now, we, we won't know. And that's why I do look at the close. But if we close, you know, closer to the high, somewhere in the, you know, upper quadrant, you know, this will tell me that a lot of the risk was taken out. And that if you buy the thing, if you put a buy stop above here, that likely, you know, 
uh, it won't go down to you know that risk limit. And so sometimes what then that I call these key reversals for a reason because they are a key reversal. They are a key thing that you know if you get in, you understand a where to get in, where the momentum's in your favor, and b you know how to establish your risk. And ideally, you know, uh, I should wait for these circumstances. But in hindsight, I thought that was that was my key reversal. And I got in here. And but you know what? I kept all of these trades. You know, despite the fact that they kept dropping, and you know, I you know, I sent out emails and with stop losses that I thought were widen up, and you know, just got nicked out. But I've kept all of these trades because I just feel that. You know, we're digging in. I see a certain vision that, you know, we've got higher lows. We've got all this stuff that we saw in the daily, the weekly. And look, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, Monday comes here and it could be down here. And, you know, these yen pairs, I'm so ambivalent. You know, they're they're up, they're down. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what they're doing. Certain ones are much stronger than others, like Canadian yen kind of was much stronger this week uh, and looks pretty good on the weekly. Actually, it doesn't. That still looks pretty like a downtrend. Um, you know, so it's kind of dry, driving me mad. Uh, in the meantime, I'm still making a bit of money. Now, the Swiss yen, um, we had a good close. We, you can see this weekly reversal. Yes, you know, it's bumping along these resistance areas, and it may take a lo lot more time to bump between, but it looks like between 114 and 118 that this is the range and that, you know, you can buy the dips in the Swiss yen. Uh, and you can see that, to my mind, this weekly reversal kind of underpins your risk so that, you know, next, you know, into next week, it, you know, dips 30, 50 pips. I would kind of buy that. You know, and I'm just getting this feeling that these yen pairs, uh, they may not want to make a final turn, but maybe there's still, uh, you know, some momentum left in them before uh, they take another turn down. So you can see we've got this key reversal going on at the, I'm going to see, interested to see how the Euro yen, you know, uh, uh, trades by the end of the day. But, you know, we have kind of dug in this week. We kind of held and now I'm going to, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how we go into next week. Does it hold or does it give way to the trend? And so either way, you know, uh, just by understanding kind of the structure, what you're looking at, setting up, you know, some scenario analysis, you can be dynamically appear, you know, prepared. But to my mind, it really doesn't need to be that hard. Just wait for something that, you know, looks pretty outstanding. And then, you know, you can, so to my mind, let's see how this closes. I mean, if this closes, you know, in the middle or, you know, to the low part of the bar, it's going to really change the way, you know, I will look at it versus the way I'm looking at it now, where it's trading at the, you know, the high end of the bar and you know, I'm sure by the end of the session, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this 80 pips higher. But uh, it may not. It could be 80 pips lower. So yen pairs have been kind of driving me crazy. Uh, I know I'm driving you guys crazy. I've been kind of holding my ground uh, on this pound yen. Uh, I still think that we're coming up into this 140 area. And, um, you know, it just uh, it's, it doesn't uh, doesn't make uh, make it easy. So Michael says, I took some of the same losses, uh, but it shouldn't be a big deal if you're using good risk management. And so that's what I've been saying. I mean, you know, I suggested taking a half a percent risk or 0.75 percent risk. So, you know, if you get beat up on three trades and you've lost two and a half percent, but you go long here and it goes to 140 and you make eight percent. So now you've lost three out of four trades and you're up six percent. That's how I trade. You know, I lose more than 50% of my trades. And I, I still manage to be up huge because I focus on some of these things that are whales and then just milk them for everything they've got. So I'm long and frankly, I'll probably get long on, on a burst above a new high today. So, uh, you know, I tend to get aggressive when I see something and then the market starts, um, you know, showing me, um, or confirming, you know, what I'm looking at, but this hasn't been easy, you know, three, 400 point slashes every four minutes. And so this is why I counsel that you just cannot trade like this. 
So right now, this looks ugly again. Looks like it's going to come off. You know, it looks like it's topping out. Looks like this double top maybe, you know, kind of holding this whole thing. And now we're in another double top area. And maybe I should just get out. But, you know, it's just, it's you, you can't trade that way. You know, if you're position trading and looking for a move, you can see that this is just, uh, it's a heart attack. And you cannot make good long-term decisions. Just impossible. If I was looking at this right now and say, this looks like a double top here. We've got a double top here. And, uh, you know, I should get out. And then, you know, so and, and maybe, maybe that, that would be the right thing to do. Um, but uh, I'm just, you know, going to see how we finish up today and, you know, make a decision from there. Maybe hedge my position going into the weekend. Uh, and, you know, there's a good, good chance that, you know, if it comes off 50, 70 points and closes in the middle of the range, I will do that, you know. Um, I'll either bail out of some of the positions or I'll hedge some of the positions, uh, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll deal with it. So I know that that discussion was a little all over the place. It was a very different discussion than we usually have, but um, this is really the reality of trading. It's uh, it's not easy. It's not straightforward. Uh, the market throws you all kinds of crap to throw you off the scent. And uh, you got to kind of figure out what is the real deal here. And that's really that's really um, the job of the trader. It's like, what is the real separating the real from the not real? And if you're trying to do that, you know, on a 15 minute time frame, you can see how you know, yeah, you may nail a double top here and get out here, but eventually you're just going to get chewed up. So, and but on the on the other hand, I've been positioning myself, and uh, you know, just just getting you know whacked every every you know two minutes where I you know I could have gotten out on some fertile areas and then I get whacked and then I could have gotten out here and I get whacked and so, you know, I go back and forth. I could have just taken profits on every one of these trades and they would equal. <laughs> as if this thing went to 140, uh, you know, in one shot. So, um, you know, easier said than done. But, uh, you know, so again, we're at a cusp and, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. And this is why, you know, I look for price. And I'm, I'm going to look to see where, you know, this market closes relative to the high and low. And, you know, if by the end of the day, you know, we're down here, it's going to look a lot different than if we close up here. So the close to me is very important. And, you know, if we end up down here, then I'm either going to, you know, maybe bail on some positions, uh, you know, certainly put a hedge on uh, or something. But I still, you know, try and draw in my mind, OK, you know, can I see? Well, obviously, if, you know, this thing, you know, drops here today and looks like this. You know, can I still see prices, you know, cutting through all of that? And, I, you know, I don't, you know, that's not how it works. Whenever there's kind of near-term price history, the market just doesn't cut through that. So I think that, you know, um, this thing could ju just be ugly while it, you know, figures out a way to, uh, you know, to get going. But I have sufficient amb you know, ambivalence in these yen pairs. I can make a case for them going either way that, uh, you know, it's not easy. But the pound yen just seems like it's got this foothold. And, you know, I'm just playing, you know, the support right now. All right, so let's just move on, kind of take a look at what the, uh, you know, US dollar has been looking like. I spent a, a lot of time there because I just thought that was important because, you know, I, I send out these trades but, you know, there's obviously a lot of thinking behind, you know, trading. And um, I just try to share with you my insight and how I kind of handle sometimes when it gets difficult. You know, um, if, uh, you know, you want to hold on a trade, there are strategies you can employ. You can, you can throw on a hedge. You can do different things uh, to see how it's going to shake out. So, you know, here again, we have. The dollar, where I think it's, you know, short and long term, you know, got all of these top things. And I think directionally it will head lower. But uh, you can see that we had this uh, key reversal. That's kind of held. And I, I said at the time, it's likely that, you know, we were, we could probably encounter something like this where the market just, you know, goes like this for a while. 
where you know it looks ugly and it bounces and then maybe it just yields. But um, I just think that that key reversal kind of kept things in check. Um, and even though it looks kind of ugly this week, we kind of came off. You know, again, I try and draw in my mind, you know, can I see the, you know, the dollar dropping through that price like that? And I really can't. So I just think it looks like it's going to be, you know, kind of choppy. Uh, and, you know, maybe we catch a bid here next week. So, you know, it's either way. I mean, but this this is a bearish chart. And ultimately, you know, I am looking for you know, the dollar to go lower, but that doesn't mean that, you know, we can't get this retest, this neckline before we do something like that. So it just looks bunched up right now and nothing really exciting. Um, you know, the resistance, even though the euro went up this week, I still see that it has resistance and there's still, uh, to my mind, uh, it looks like this thing could still come, you know, come lower. This thing's in a kind of a long-term downtrend we had kind of a, a resistance area right here. We had this key reversal at 120, made a new high, close on the low. You had another one here. You kind of got this funky looking small uh, double top head and shoulders. You basically came back to the neckline. And I think next week we could be going back down again. Or not. You know, we could just play in this thing and, you know, it could just stay choppy for a while. But I don't see a, you know, anything great. And, you know, frankly, I would look to uh, sell the rallies um, in the euro or kind of buy the dips in the dollar for now. Uh, pound also kind of digging in here, kind of got these inside bars. And uh, pound looks, you know, again, I think pound looks on balance stronger. Uh, relative to, you know, most other currencies. And that's why I like the long side of pound New Zealand, pound odd, pound yen. The pound seems to, you know, have, uh, you know, counterintuitively because a lot of crap is going on with Brexit. You know, we've kind of got this even atom double uh, bottom in the short term. You've got this inverted head and shoulders. And, you know, like pound yen, you've also been adhering to this kind of short term tr trend line. And so I'm watching this, you know, pretty carefully how we come out of it. And you've got this little coil here where for the last three weeks, you've kind of been bunched up. And when, you know, things get pent up, sometimes they spring up, you know, out of these coils. And to my mind, uh, it looks like, you know, so I would kind of buy the dips in this pound. So um, it looks like, you know, it could have another shot back up at this resistance area. And then that would be, you know, a very interesting looking chart. Uh, or not, you know, if we start cutting through this thing, you know, it could, it could open a whole thing like that, which make, you know, pound yen and pound New Zealand and all those trades, you know, go the other way. So, you know, I'm watching all of these areas uh, very carefully uh, and I'm just watching how price, you know, sits. But I do think that, you know, we'll come back, retest the support and, and, you know, and keep getting, you know, it looks like there's some support going on in the British pound. So um, ironically, it looks like the stronger pair against everything. And even in the short term, we've got this, you know, trend line. And, you know, we've also got this, um, sorry. Looks just like the pound yen, pound New Zealand. Looks like we've got this funky looking, you know, inverted head and shoulders, which is a bull uh, pattern, which should send prices, you know, back to 132, 135. So I don't know. Pound looks like it's it's kind of digging in on a relative basis. Is stronger uh, relative to almost every other currency, which again goes counter to everything that's been going on in the UK. Australian, uh, you know, again, I see this little double top here. I think that it will likely still have resistance at this 74. And on balance, I would expect it to still be somewhat lower, um, you know, for the next couple of weeks, sideways to, to lower. I do think that it hit this resistance area at 74. 
that's likely to keep it in check. I mean, we do have this kind of inverted head and shoulders. And I'm just going to keep an eye of, you know, if this holds and we continue to strengthen, then we'll take a look at it. But it just feels uh, like there's going to be, you know, uh, not a lot uh, going on there. Um, New Zealand all kind of the same thing. We've got resistance at the 68, and uh, I think that will continue to churn or go lower uh, in New Zealand dollar US. And we looked at the yen, uh, Canadian, uh, you know, it's uh, it's thrashing around this range. Looks like it hit the resistance area at 134, you know, probably likely to thrash. So the dollar pairs I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not thrilled about. You know, look guys, what I try and do is I find things that, you know, I really looking at, what I'm focusing on, what I like. And, you know, you don't have to be, you know, uh, you don't have to dance at all the weddings. So, you know, I might miss an opportunity here, there, but I'm really honing, you know, all of my kind of focus in uh, pound New Zealand and uh, pound yen. So, you know, also pound Australian, also closing very strong and you know, looking like it's shaping up, you know, with this uh, double bottom. I said, you know, all the way back when it was bunching up down here, that this was likely a huge uh, opportunity. And I think that this is what, you know, if you look back, you know, it probably will look like. So I think there's just huge opportunities in these pound pairs. And, you know, this is, you know, these coils where you start to see all of this, I was saying in, in my emails, it's thrashing about here, uh, but I was saying, look, I, I think this is digging in. This is just finding a way. It's volatile. It's all over the place, but it's just finding a way to dig in at this support area. And then, you know, we kind of had a retest here, get everybody out, you know, hit all the stops. And now, you know, I think it's, it's going to go up. So I do feel this is really where my focus is. So this is kind of the neckline where, you know, if it thrusts through 184, you know, this is going to start confirming that we've got a bottom, which will over time start sending prices higher. So, you know, again, the first soldiers through the, 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 the gate in a war are sacrificed. And uh, I know it was not easy this week, uh, but I just kind of stuck it out and endured it, took all the stress and which is not good um, at uh, at any age, but certainly in my age. So, but you know, and and I I'm, I get pissed because I say to myself, look, trading should be easy, and 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 it is because you know, trading it gives you once you see the pattern, you know, you see the support, and now you can see that you know you have a pattern, and then within the pattern you also have the price. So you have these two key reversals. So this is really what I look for. I, you know, I do look to come out of the gate early. And actually, once you identify the 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 pattern and the price action, this is early. If you get in at 136 and it goes to 142, you're getting in early. Unfortunately, I always try and get in right here, you know, and got to and got to take all of this crap. You know, I still I don't know why after after all these years I I still can't you know calm myself down and wait for something. But frankly, I thought that was it. I thought that key reversal was going to, you know, there was a good chance that it could fly out of here. And this is the problem with me. I have a, a greater vision. I see where this thing's going, but it's like being 12, you know, cars back. You know, it's it's going to take its time. It's going to flesh you out. It's going to take all the weak hands out. And that's exactly what it did. But if you wait, now you've got the pattern and the price action. So you know where the risk is and you know where the momentum is. That to me is the holy grail of trading. This is it. This is this encompasses everything that I try to look for, you know, in my trading, where you know I kind of you know find a pattern. You know, here's the you know little narrow range bar and explodes out of here. Here's a little symmetrical triangle, narrow range bar explodes out of here. So this is what I try and find in my trading. First off, step back, look at what the global vision is, because you know if you look at that 15-minute chart, 
you can make a case for this thing going up and down every 15 minutes and you cannot, you know, make d- decisions that way. Certainly not decisions that will help you hold on for a trade, you know, for 600 pips. So when this is at 142, I'm still going to be in this trade. Even though, you know, I took all this crap down here. So, but this to me is, this is it. This is what, you know, I try and look for. And, and, and guess what? If it fails, you know, then that's it. I'll dust myself off and, 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 and find another trade. But by and large, over time, if I can find these setups with this price momentum, understand my risk, understand my direction, you know, do this a few times a year. Um, it's, you know, that's what uh, works for me. So Michael says, so what's your long-term price level in pound yen? Well, I, I think it's going to come back into here. It's going to come somewhere back into this area. So, you know, that's a good question. And again, um, you know, I peel back and look at the long-term cadence. So, you know, this is still a rounding top. And every time we get these flurries, you know, it, it, it looks good. And then you just get whacked again. So you can see that we, you know, we get these flurries all the time where, you know, the market, you know, gives you one of these gooses. And this could be another one where and then, you know, we could get another goose here and it looks good. But look, if I can get 500 pips, uh, you know, I'll take it. You know, if, if it gives me four or 500 pips before it goes here. And then it looks like it's going to go there and I'm going to make 2000 pips the other way. That's what I look for. I'm not looking to be right. I'm not looking to, um, you know. I'm just looking for, okay, where's the momentum? And so this looks like it should carry. Where it's going to stop, look, it reasonably, you know, will likely stop short of those lows if it if it's still in the cadence of this thing. And so it could go to 137, it could go to 138, could go to 140, could 142. I don't know. But I still feel like the momentum and, you know, next week, you know, sometimes you, my view of how the market shoots out of certain areas, like if it goes up very strongly, you know, it starts suggesting that maybe there's something else going on. I mean, I still have to kind of lean toward the bearish case that this is, you know, could be just a bear market rally in a long term, you know, down market. But um, I'm also looking at on the other case that maybe uh, just maybe, you know, this double bottom here, you know, this kind of funky looking head and shoulders could be the basis for something, you know, that goes the other way. But then, you know, we'll need confirmation in the form of higher highs. It will certainly need to have to come, you know, through, you know, 144, 145, you know. And then if it's up there, now, you know, I'm looking at this. But, you know, let's not get carried away. It still could be, you know, one of these before it does one of these. And frankly, it kind of still looks like that to me. So that's why it's a little frightening you know, to be long, but I'm just seeing this kind of short-term momentum. And then I see that this kind of gave me, you know, a way to kind of take a look at the market where I get a, a reversal. And so that key reversal tells me, okay, you know, um, I can play in this thing and, you know, get a little insight to, you know, if this thing's going to hold or not, and then see how the market reacts there. So, you know, if we keep pivoting, um, so I just feel, and especially with dollar yen, I've been so bearish that thing and it's just having a hard time, it's struggling to go down now, that I have a feeling that it could go the other way really quickly. And um, that's where the opportunities are, where it plays possum, you don't see it, you've been looking at it a certain way for so long and then it shoots the other way. And I look for those paradigm shifts where, you know, it just looks what it's playing possum, it's hiding in the reeds, It's sucking you in, and then it just, you know, bombs out of here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing another uh, up another 150 pips today. Um, I just feel that it's one of these things where it's kind of playing possum, playing in the reeds, and uh, we're going to see the highs again today. But uh, what do I know? Steve says, at what point do you give up and get out of a trade? Well, when it starts 
So like I said, you know, and I've we've spent a lot of time on this, you know, this pound, but I think, it, you know, I'm trying to give you an insight into my thinking is that I try and see, you know, the whole, the whole uh, composite and then, you know, see, you know, so the way I've been playing this for years is on the, you know, I've been playing these counter trend trades. So when I see a double bottom like this, I will play this. When I see a double, I, I will play these moves. But I kind of always understand that they're kind of counter trend moves in the context of this longer trend, uh, you know, secular downtrend. Now, we could well be, you know, in one of those things again where we get another counter trend trade. You know, and it gets just shorter here. 140, 141, and then it starts coming down here again. So I'm not going to start, uh, you know, you know, fighting that. So you know, I have certain objectives. I, you know, I have certain understandings. So I, I just think that we have some blue sky now. That this thing needs to probably come back and come back to 140. Uh, you know, and then we'll see what it does there. So, you know, I try and, you know, see where all of the, you know, the, the barriers are, all the price structures are. It may, you know, kind of come back here and then go here and then, you know, come out here a few months later. So, um, you know, the market, you know, I'm always ahead, too far ahead. And, uh, you know, that's kind of my, my, my problem. Um, but I, I do see it and I try and put structures so that, you know, I am prepared for any eventuality. So, you know, again, if it you know, comes out here, you know, I also want to be prepared when, you know, this thing dies in the direction that, you know, it, it, it has kind of always been looking to me that this thing will probably go make a new low again. So you've got to marry those things. You know, this is maybe just a counter trend trade within a, a long term down market. But at some time, at some point, if this starts turning around, you know, then you have a paradigm shift that sets the basis for that. And, uh, you know, um, it's not easy. But I just try and, you know, find moves where I can get substantial thrusts. You know, sometimes it's 200, sometimes it's 400, sometimes, you know, and you guys know I, I've taken 1,000 pip runs out of trades where I feel like there's a cushion. And I think Pound New Zealand is one of those things where you're setting up for a 1,000 pip run in this trade or more. So, you know, if you've got a double bottom, if this is a bottom, then, you know, who knows? You got one of those and, you know, it probably will take, you know, getting to this neckline around 203, which is a long way away. And so, you know, but I could be completely wrong. It could, you know, starts coming here. And so when things start shifting away from the way I'm looking at it, then, um, you know, that's, you know, when I start altering. And so you're kind of in the middle here. You could still make the case that, you know, this is, a, you know, looks like a head and shoulders. So now it's like, is this the head and shoulders or is this the double bottom? Which one's dictating, you know, where it's going? And, uh, you know, to me, you know, try and just look at it. And it's, it, this has been a case of higher lows. So it's you know, higher lows means it's, it's, you know, that's consistent with an up market, although not an easy up market. And so if this started to, you know, started coming out here and started to, you know, started making lower lows all of a sudden, that would change things for me. But you could also make a lower low here. It could just be a, a fake out and, uh, it, it just could be one more goose to get everybody out before it goes again. So, again, I try and look at price patterns. I try and look at price action and, uh, you know, realize you're not going to be perfect. But the thing is, if you can get a pattern and a price action, then, you know, you don't you don't have to outguess it. Right. So if you've got, you know, this this shape and now you've got this huge price action. This is really, this takes a lot of the risk out because these guys like you took the risk last night. And um, now you can see that, you know, the sellers just, you know, uh, are going to have a hard time down there. So that kind of insulates you, kind of gives you insurance. That's why, I, you know, I kind of coined these things as insurance day bars, you know, where, 
this, you know, this day, this key reversal is an insurance day because it tells me uh, two things. It tells me where my risk is, and now it also gets me on the side of the momentum. Now, you know, you could have one of these things here where it comes down here and then, you know, takes off. So, you know, uh, it, it still could come up 150 pips uh, on Sunday night before it takes off. But to my mind, this key reversal, uh, you know, starts telling you a couple things. And, you know, if you take your trade on this and you get long and you get stopped out, then, oh, well, you know, you just, uh, you know, risk the, the, the moon. Although on this one, I would take a, a bigger risk because I think a lot of the risk has been taken out by virtue of today's price action. So when a lot of the risk has been taken out, sometimes I feel like I can put on what I, uh, you know, a riskless trade. I used to say to my brother all the time that this trade has no risk in it and he used to go crazy with me. But, you know, sometimes I just feel it in my bones. I feel it in the shape. I feel it in the price. And I kind of put on bigger bets and, uh, you know, I tend to make some good money on that. But I'm not suggesting that. Take take your normal risk, uh, and uh, if it works out and you make 600 pips, you're going to do just fine. And you know we will add along the way. I guarantee you that there will be places to add to this trade along the way. All right. So we spent a lot of time on that. Let me just kind of move very quickly forward. Um, looking at the silver market here. I don't know what to make of this thing. I think it's still a difficult trade. Um, I still think we're going to come back down and retest this $20 level. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about this, you know, volatility. And, you know, right now it's a bit of a big guessing game. It's a bit of in the middle. So we had this, you know, you know, leading up to this, we had this just amazing volatility. And then several weeks of volatility. And it's just, you know, it's like, a marathon runner. You can't, you know, run full speed forever, you know, so it just exhausted itself and then, you know, created this triangle and, uh, you know, suggested shorting gold uh, out of this triangle last week and we made a lot of money. So right now, obviously, we just, and I said last week, when you have such a big range, uh, you know, there's no use putting a sell stop under this range. The market always kind of has to explore, you know, that kind of range. So now we kind of have an inside bar here and, you know, you might want to put a sell stop underneath this uh, inside bar because uh, I do think that it's going to come down and retest this, this $20 again. But, you know, look, you could get, get ugly first before it does. So it's kind of in the middle. And uh, again, this is not really where my focus is right now. So I feel like, um, I don't know. There's a couple of things going on on the daily, the weekly. Maybe you still get back to the breakout area. Typically, trades find a way to get back to the breakout. So maybe you still, you know, sneak up somewhere here to this top of this triangle, uh, 26 before it, you know, it goes again. You do have this kind of key reversal in this coil. Although, you know, the last couple of days highs have been lower than the last, but you know, this is kind of coiling at the top, so you could. You know, you could get a break out of here, another, you know, another, you know, again, another retest of this breakout area. That would not shock me, you know, get this thing into the mid one, uh, 25s again, you know, then I would look to take it for another spin on the downside. Um, and gold, um, kind of the same thing. I got made a lot of money last week shorting it. You know, we, I said we would probably get a bounce right around this bar, but to me, you know, this is still a case of lower highs. And we're still in this, you know, triangle. And uh, I still think that uh, it's probably more room on the downside. So with gold, you've kind of snuck back, you know, to the breakout area. You know, maybe we get back to, you know, 1917 or 25, somewhere up there. But uh, I would look to, uh, this is a tough one. I mean, that this, this takes some stones to, you know, trade this thing on the short side. Uh, but I just feel that's the place to be. Um, this is the daily. Let me just peel it back. And uh, again, I, I'm more inclined to to be short this than not. But again, you know, you don't have to be a hero. Just wait for a bar to tell you, you know. 
Uh, and I may be completely wrong on this. So I was right last week, made a bunch of money predicting that it would break lower out of this uh, triangle. And now we're kind of, you know, making an attempt to go back to the, you know, the breakout area, which is right around there. So maybe, you know, high 1930s. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, this could be, you know, the pause that just refreshes the, the rally and it keeps going. So certainly if we start, you know, sneaking through, you know, the upside of this, maybe it's a pause that refreshes it in a long term thing. I, I just still feel, I don't know, somewhat bearish on gold. So um, for right now, you did, uh, you know, catch this double bottom consistent with the support. I had a feeling we would catch up, you know. Uh, some support in this 1850 area, and this is what we have. But I would, you know, watch out for a trap here. So my instincts are, you know, to still find a place to get short gold. Uh, let's go to the stock market, and then I'll take some of your questions. So obviously with the Trump news and obviously, you know, with this and that, we've got a down thing, but, you know, I don't look at it in context with that. I said uh, that uh, trading in here is going to be very difficult. Uh, even in my last weekly video report way ahead of the news events of today that I think we've made the highs uh, and it uh, doesn't mean we've, we're going to collapse, but um, we're likely to go into a trading range here. So you had, this uh, key reversal last week, you know, there was some support off that. Uh, and there's still, you know, the path of least resistance in this market is still higher. You know, if you peel back and look at this, you know, this uptrend, you know, if you look within the uptrend, you can see the key reversal here made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high. So let's see. But you can see that each one of these was followed by higher highs. Right. So every time I was made a new low, we had this cadence of higher highs. So even though you've got this key reversal here, not really the case, kind of lower highs. So, you know, markets become conditioned to these bounces uh, lasting and uh, maybe uh, the next one doesn't. So I don't know. I still feel like it maybe needs to explore this area somewhere in here before it finds some resistance. So I think it's just going to be tricky in here. I think you kind of maybe found your interim low, you found your interim high, and it's kind of going to be a kind of a, a guessing game in here with a lot of volatility. But again, going to be very interesting to see where we close today. So, you know, if we kind of completely crap out today and do something like this, you know, that'll have a whole different look. So this is why I really look at how a market closes relative to the high and low, right? So when this made a new high and closed on the low, I knew that, you know, there was going to be pressure on this thing and likely that that was going to constitute a major uh, resistance area. So now we've kind of re-entered the atmosphere of this broadening triangle and it's going to be real interesting to see. And again, this is where I got to govern myself, just let more history you know, up here, we don't have to make every trade. Um, so I think just to sum it all up, my focus is on pound yen and uh, pound New Zealand. There were some questions on um, the elite, um, from our elite traders. I'm gonna take those first. Um, some of the questions were pretty lengthy. So I'm going to have to, and I think, I just X'd out of them. Sorry, give me one minute here. Okay, so... Um, You know, my FX book has a, um, a, uh, a risk calculator and it's somewhat changed. I did a video and uh, I probably should just put that video in the um, Sunday email just to make it clear. Um, this is my FX book. They've changed 
Uh, they added one parameter. So uh, Howard says, can you please clear this up? Position size calculator. Uh, I'm not sure what you meant by two positions, but maybe this is what you were asking. So uh, this is a position. This is how you calculate your risk. So even if you want to take part in a pound yen and you want to have a 400 pip stop in the pound yen, take a huge, you know, uh, just let it do whatever it's going to do. You can still do that if you keep your position sizes small. So you can see that you can calculate basically anywhere in the world. Let's take a, you know, $2,500 account size. Uh, you know, your risk ratio. So let's say you want to take a 0.75% bet in the pound yen and you want to put your stop loss at 350 pips so you don't get stopped out. So what they've done is my effects book has added this field, this contract size. And so to my mind, you know, if you're trading less than a $5,000 account, you probably should be trading like micro lots, which are $1,000 uh, units, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 above, you probably want to trade a mini lot, which is 10,000. And then, you know, 50,000 and above, uh, you may want to trade a normal size lot, which is 100,000 units. So that's how you kind of do that. So on a $2,500 account, let's say doing, uh, you know, micro lots and you have to find Let's just take a $5,000 account and I'm doing a mini lot. Uh, that's a $10,000 unit uh, contract size. So that's called a mini lot. $100,000 is called a normal lot. And so that's how you dynamically, and maybe that was your question, Howard. So that's what they've added. So you come down to, you know, pound yen. Now you got a 350 and you pitch your calculate. And this will tell you exactly how many lots you can do in a $5,000 account and still take a 350 pip you know, stop loss. So you can give yourself room. So it doesn't matter. Let's say you got stopped out and that $350, you would have lost $37.50 or 0.75% of your $5,000 account, nothing, and live to fight another day. So this is what I would recommend. Like pound New Zealand and pound yen, where I think you could have 500,000 pip, you know, uh, rips to the upside. You know, you've got to give these things room and 250 pips, 300 pips, give them room. But you can still do that by, you know, keeping your lot size to a certain minimum. So, Howard, I hope that answered um, your question there. Emilio says, uh, I took a tiny bet short oil. So, yeah, I, you know, I've been bearish on oil. Oil has started to roll uh, this week. So, yeah, looks like you've got this resistance area at 45. Nice double top, whether it is ready to go. Because again, you've had this straight upside, so it may just go sideways and give you a few, you know, uh, you know, false looks. But I do think that this is ready to roll over and go lower. Um, gone we. Um, says, I'm not sure what type of trade relating questions to so look for. My question: How would you choose the spacing between tops and bottoms? There's no real, you know. Some can be very narrow. Uh, so, you know, um, you had a very narrow spacing here that gave rise to that. And, you know, some are, you know, larger. It's, 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 uh, there's no set thing. Here's a, a double top on uh, oil. You can see that, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you characterize the spacing. It's narrow or it's not, right, but it, whatever it is, that's what it is. Then you kind of had this trap triple top that you know was spaced out even more broadly, and frankly, to me, the more something spaces out, the bigger the top is, the bigger the fall. So maybe that's a good way to kind of answer that. But there's no, you know, I, I you know, it's like I see little double bottoms like this. Uh, in fact, we've seen that on uh, I think the pound yen, where you know. Um, What am I looking for here? No, it's pound New Zealand, sorry. So you can see how small this double bottom was here. You know, obviously gave rise to a, you know, a thing, but so it doesn't, to me, it doesn't, the spacing, uh, you can see there was kind of a double bottom right here. Um, and then it needed to take time and then made another double bottom, took more time. And the more, obviously the bigger the bottom, I think, you know, the 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 um, the um, the bigger the indication, the bigger the base, but it doesn't it depends where you are in time. So 
you know, this built a big base here in terms of spacing. This was a nicely spaced out double bottom. You had a rounding bottom. So this took from July to, this took over a year and a half for this bottom to form, right? So this is a nice base to build on. And then you had another bottom here. A, you know, the spacing, you know, was not that long. And now you have another double bottom here and the spacing is even shorter, but, you know, it could still lead to this. So uh, it's, it's not really a space thing. It's, uh, you know, double bottoms can, or, you know, tops or whatever can come in, whatever time frames they come in. And, and uh, I don't really look at that. Um, I don't know that there's a set way to answer that. How do you identify key reversal bars? I think I talked at length about the uh, pound yen, the key reversal bar there. Uh, how should we place our stop losses? Again, some trades are bigger than others. So, you know, if you think that this is, you know, I think this is going to go make new highs. So in which case is a 3,000 pip profit on the table. Now, it could take another year to do it. Uh, but I think we're at one of those moments where this could be a bottom that, you know, could lead to a new high. And so if you're, you know, if you're at an inflection point of this kind of trade, then my calculation for my, my, my risk and where to put a stop loss. So obviously it would probably be a breach under these lows and you could still get one of these things where you get a false look here and then it goes. So, you know, anything could happen, but, um, you know, it really depends on the trade. I can't really, you know, every trade has a different objective. And frankly, my objective on this is quite big. And I'm thinking that I'm getting in at the early stages of what could be a life altering tra uh, change, trade. Um, so let's see. Um, also talking about the New Zealand dollar. Um, so you talk about moving averages and weekly trend lines and stuff. I don't really look at you know all of that stuff. I just look at price and time. So uh, New Zealand dollar, I did go through that pretty quickly, but um, you know, there's a couple things shaping up. You know, the driving, you know, trend, dominant price action has been lower in New Zealand. You know, and we saw this was the dominant price pattern that gave you a directional play. And then, you know, it that play seems to have played itself out, no pun intended, where, you know, we kind of cracked above this neckline. But, you know, I do feel that we're just at this significant area you know, where there's just a lot of headwinds here. So uh, I do feel that this looks like a, it's got a bit of a top and we're making a little bit of a shoulder here. So I just feel that maybe there's going to be another drive down to this, this neckline before maybe we do something like that. Um, I mean, this does look like a double bottom. So you've got all kinds of stuff going on here. And again, you know, it's not really what my focus is, but if I, if you put a gun to my head, I, I feel like we would, uh, we still feel like we're going to go lower at this point. And that's not looking at, you know, SMAs and moving averages and eight day EMAs and all of that stuff. So, uh, Mike recently answered long on Australian uh, dollar US and Australian right near the bottom. Um, so again, I think Australian dollar uh, is also vulnerable to a bit of a decline here, or maybe not. I mean, we've got an inverted head and shoulders, a steepening thing. So I don't know. I, I just feel there's some resistance here and I, I just need some more history to kind of make up my mind. I do feel that uh, we'll just be under pressure for the short term. It may not be a lot. Australia and New Zealand uh, is a crazy pair. It's really a pick 'em. Um, that's why I really don't spend a lot of time. It's kind of this thing looks like it's somewhat under pressure again. Hit this top, and I don't know. It's six of one, half a dozen of another, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Um, Stephen says I always enjoy your webinars. Not only that, I learn something new every time. So thanks for that, Stephen. I hope this was also one of those. Um, I do have a question. Getting into a trade is easy, and sometimes that's not even easy, but getting out is not so simple. Uh, that is if you want to raise, uh, trade for any length of time. So you say to let the market tell you when to get out, what signs do you look for? So again, I start with a global vision. You know, what, what am I looking at? 
you know, and um, you can see even on this monthly chart, this is the monthly chart of um, pound New Zealand, kind of difficult because, you know, a lot of the time it just spent really in an ambivalent stage here where we've just been thrashing around. And this looks like really a dominant downtrend. So why the heck would you be buying it? But for the last three years, I've been buying it because on the weekly, and you can see the same double bottom I saw on the weekly, I see on the monthly too. So this and the rounding bottom also. So this on the monthly shows that, you know, we put in this, this bottom. Now, look, um, these look like much more threatening lows. And ultimately, that bottom is, you know, could give way. But that's what's been kind of holding things in place, uh, you know, and then every time we kind of here's another double bottom. And then this month, it looks like we're holding at an area where there's a you know bottom, you know, uh, you know, on the, you know, the September last month and the other month. And now we're holding. And so if we start going this way, uh, it just feels like, you know, this thing. But it's not easy. It's just, you know, it's been in you know three steps forward, two back. And I short this thing a great deal of time also because of these counter trend play plays. So you can see we've kind of got this triangle going on and, you know, now, you know, so my next objective would be around this 202 area, you know, and, you know, if we start getting through there, then maybe that is finally something that releases, you know, this trade, you know, and I'm, I'm just looking for one of these releases. I was long here. During the pandemic, when I got one of these releases, you know, on a Sunday night, I made like 3,000 pips in a in an hour. So this is kind of what I look for. You know, sometimes you've got to spend six months, you know, being prepared for one trade that, you know, all 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 happens in one hour. You know, that's kind of the, you know, <laughs> the toughness of being a trader, right? But I do think that, you know, we're trying to grab a foothold here. So my vision is, you know, we're going to get back to this 2,000 area, which is, you know, 500 pips from here. So it's like, it really depends on what, what is your vision and objective for this trade? So I expect to kind of, you know, get back to, you know, this, this resistance area, this neckline and go higher. So I feel like this is, you know, digging in, that could be a major bottom and there could be 500 or 700 pips on the table with this trade. So these are the trades that I, I look for. You know, in, you know, I, I, I do trades when there's nothing happened for 150 pips. I like to have fun. But with serious money, you know, I start loading up and building positions for trades that look like they're going to launch, uh, you know, as this one does. So it all depends on where you are in the cycle. What's your vision? You know, similarly, when I saw these reversals and these breakouts here, I got short. But I knew that, you know, this is, you know, mainly an uptrending market. And I was just looking to take a piece of the middle. I ended up taking out six, eight hundred pips on these, these 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 huge things that fall, but my eye was always on these 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 trades on the upside. So every trade is different, um, every take profit is different, every objective is different based on what you're seeing on the charts. And the thing is, this is maturing. So what I mean by maturing is that this bottom took place four or five years ago. So at some point, you know, with this, you know, this really hasn't really taken off yet. But if this is a real bottom this will take off. So this may be one of those moments. This could be one of those moments where you look back and go, hey, I could have changed my life here. And, you know, the nice thing is if it fails, then, okay, you took this much risk for this much opportunity. And, you know, that's what it comes down to. You know, it's just a risk reward calculation. And obviously, there are moments in time and trades that some risks are better than others. And to me, you know, pound New Zealand long, pound yen long, right now, you know, the risk reward, you know, looks fairly favorable. You know, you can see that this, you know, now three hours from now, you know, pound yen could be 100 points lower and it's going to completely change the whole look of what I'm looking at now. But if let's say we look like this on Sunday night and we have this key reversal, this to me is, you know, and now it just feels like there's just a lot of room up here. There's just, you know, pick it. It's arbitrary. Does it go to 139? Does it go 140, 141, 142? It's it's but it, it looks like there's there's room to 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 motor, you know, in the, in this area. 
And so, you know, I, I, I think that 140 is doable. So that's 400 pips away. All right, so that was mainly the questions there. Um, I'll answer one or two, and then I know I covered a lot uh, today, and there's probably more questions than uh, than answers. Um, ATN thanks. We do learn something every time. Thanks again for your insights. Um, Sam said, thanks for that, ATN. Uh, Sam says, with your view of silver, it can go higher. Have you exited the short from it? So I had a stop loss, uh, probably not too far away from where things are now. I may be stopped out. I don't really care. I just take, so gold's going to lower. Um, I had a 1921. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think I got stopped out. I had a 2421 stop loss. Uh, so I don't think I got stopped out yet. I think it came a hair short. Um, Michael says, would you put in a buy order when Pound New Zealand closes today at the high end of the bar? So, look, I'm bullish on Pound New Zealand. I would, yeah, I would buy it. But, you know, obviously you have to be prepared to risk to 193. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, not easy. Um, but, yes, I'm a, I'm a buyer. I just think, you know, we've held at this thing and, you know, with all the back and forth, all the, the excitement. So this is what it looks like on a 15 minute chart this week. You know, it looks like an EKG chart up and down and sideways and all over. But by the end of the week, right now, we're slightly higher than we were last week. So, you know, that's the thing, if, you know, you're trading a million times over the last week. Uh, guessing up and down and taking and, you know, it's slightly higher for the week, but it's just building, um, it's just building on this, uh, this premise of this, uh, you know, but it's, you know, it's a budding double bottom, you know, it's the same thing with pounds, uh, Australia, where it looks like it could be a double bottom, but it may not, it, it really needs to be confirmed. I mean, that's the thing I do get in early. I, I get in way before these patterns do confirm themselves. Uh, but usually when I'm early, I can make enough money that even if it turns, I can get out making some money or scratching even. So, you know, you have this reversal and this low here, you have this low here. So I'm kind of hypothesizing when we look back a couple of weeks from now that this will look like a double bottom. And in fits and starts, you know, if it goes through this 185 neckline, you know, it's it's going to do something like that. Now I'm early on that. I mean, this this could just fail and keep going, and it may not be a bottom. If it doesn't go through this neckline, then it really isn't the bottom that I think I am. So I just kind of see these things early, but I see them consistent with what I'm looking at in the big picture, which to me, you know, this triple bottom, you know, with this neckline here, you know, and all of these, you know, support levels along this neckline indicate that, you know, this is just a stealth. I mean, this has just been, you know, a hard thing to hold, but you still, you know, higher lows somewhat. Now, you know, these could all come out and I could, you know, keep going this way. Uh, but I don't know. I just feel that this, this, when we look back and this is, you know, where you kind of have to do some vision. I kind of look at the market very aesthetically. I try and try and see the movements and the cadences and try and say, does this, does this look consistent with the market? Does this look consistent with what I'm seeing? I play a lot of scenario analysis because to me, it's, you know, it's a very visual thing. You know, you see a double, double top and you say, can that be a double top? And yeah, you, you know, it can, you know, I saw this ascending uh, broadening pattern. So, you know, it's just looking at these things. It's like looking at the ocean. You just see different patterns emerge all the time. And uh, that's what I love about this business. It's always throwing you something, throwing you curves, making you rethink what you're looking at. And really what you have to decide, what is the governing pattern? What is the governing? And it's hard uh, because, you know, I could make the case for this being the governing pattern that we have a triple bottom. So over time we should go higher or this being, you know, massive head and shoulders, which looks like this should go like that. And it may end up doing that. And if it does, guess what? I'll make a ton of money when it does. 
you know, I'll, you know, I'll take some losses in the short term, dust myself off and reevaluate. And that's what trading is. It's, it's, it's dynamic, it's fluid, it's reacting to, you know, movements and patterns. And, you know, you just try and get in where the risk reward, you know, is, is the best. And that's all I'm trying to do. And if I can do that 50% of the time, I'm going to be a massive winner because I, I make money on one or two trades a month. You know, I might make 20 trades and I make my, you know, all of my money on two trades. So, uh, you know, last week I told you to short gold. I shorted gold. I made a ton of money on one trade, probably lost a bunch on, on other trades. And I just made a bunch of money for the week going long pound New Zealand and short gold last week. And the same thing this week. I'm, you know, up on pound New Zealand. I'm up on pound yen. And uh, I'm just looking at uh, one or two trades to make me my money. How, when, where, you know, I don't know. You don't have to be perfect. Use the risk calculator, trying, you know, again, I got in too early, but you know, if you can get in on days where it's clearer, then, you know, and on days like this, where it becomes like really clear, we have these two key reversals here where it seems like now the risk has been established at this 135, you know, then, you know, I, uh, I would go a little bit bigger on the next trade, but understand that it could get back into this bar. When we see these big bars, you know, I kind of say that about silver, you know, usually the market will, I mean, if you, you know, put your stop, you know, buy stop here and just on Sunday, it opens up here. Market, you know, it could, but typically it wants to, you know, come back in here, you know, you know, like the elastic band, rediscover a little bit of that space before it gets going. So, you know, if you've got any retracement in here and you lost, use this as your risk, you know, that's when I load up. You know, I can, I go a little bit bigger if I see something like that and I just load up, you know, using that, hey, if it comes down here, I'm out and I'm prepared to take that risk. So Selena says, uh, thanks, Mark. I think I learned a lot from you today. So that is my objective. And, uh, you know, I know that it wasn't easy. I, I don't know how much you took out of that explanation. Um, Michael says, how many questions, how many trades do you think you've made in your trading career? First number that comes to your mind, I don't know, 20,000. Uh, you know, Malcolm Gladwell, you know, wrote a book called At Outliers. And he said it takes 10,000 hours to become proficient at anything. He says that genius and intellect has nothing to do with it. And, and I think I'm proof of that. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm no MIT candidate here. Uh, I'm a very average person. And, um, but he says it really doesn't come down to IQ or intellect. It's doing something for at least 10,000 hours to become proficient, whether you're a chess player or a tennis player or anything you want to be good at, he says you have to put in a minimum of 10,000 hours. So I'm trying to short circuit that for you guys. I've put in 100,000 hours or 300,000 hours looking at this thing. And I'm trying to give you the benefit, you know, of all of my mistakes uh, that I've learned uh, over the years. Ramilla says, this has been a very useful presentation and uh, uh, very useful. Um, so <laughs> those numbers make me confident. So yeah, if you'd like to post any uh, you know, reviews or comments, please do so. We have a public website. Um, we, um, you know, we publish all uh, reviews, good, bad, or indifferent, and uh, would love to hear what you have to say. Go to the Pattern Trader. Dot com, and you can read what other people have to say. If you're new to this program, if you're on the fence, did I spell that right? I guess so, yeah. All right, I'll take uh, one more question, and then I think, uh, let's see, Gregory, so I missed the first few minutes. I'll watch the replay. Yeah, so Gregory, go and watch the replay on this one. It started out very differently. Um, so I think you'll uh, you'll get some some in input one way or another out of the uh, beginning start. Uh, 
So I'm just going to look at one more question. So I think I've taken most of your questions. So I think I'm going to just end it there. Um, you know, again, appreciate any input or, in, you know, comments you had to this, uh, any feedback you have, I would appreciate it. I learned from it. Um, and, uh, you know, don't always know how to express myself in a way that is perhaps clearly, you know, understood. I just kind of look at the markets in a certain way. They do certain things consistent with what I'm looking at or they don't. And then I react in that way. I, I don't mean to say react in a way that's emotional or knee jerk. I put a structure, I put a boundary, I look for price action, and then, you know, just do the best we can. And, and I'm not looking for, you know, to be a hero on every single trade. Frankly, uh, I'm just looking for one or two trades like this. If I can ride this to 140 or 142, or maybe this thing even goes, you know, higher, if I can catch the pound New Zealand uh, for a thousand pip ride, that's what really, you know, that's what gets me up in the morning. All right, guys, thanks a ton. I will see you next week and have a great weekend.